Thank you, Glenda. Good evening and welcome to the Violet Hour How To Sewing Basics segment of tonight's program. I am Rosalind Robinson, Director of Education in the African American Filters of Baltimore. I will be demonstrating the G-SPAN sewing instructions, which were included in the BMA kit or downloaded from the BMA website. Whether you picked up materials from the BMA or are using fabrics from your wonderful stash at home, all who are Zooming with us are invited to create quilt blocks to be included in the G's Ben community quilt. If you're using your own fabric, fashion your block in a similar way as described in the demonstration. The ultimate beauty of the quilt will be enhanced by the blocks made from fabric in your personal collection. Starting at the top of the page of the uh, instructions, let's look at each block. Each block has five strips, is 15 inches in length and 13 inches wide when complete made with two different fabrics. Fabrics alternate with each strip placement. Block differences are described in each block and are sewn with one quarter inch seams. A seam is a line of stitching which holds two or more layers of fabric together. Lay out your, okay, let's take a look at the blocks. This is block A. It has three blue strips and two fancy strips. This is another block A with three blue strips and two fancy strips, but these strips are blue and not a violet or fuchsia color. The next is block B with three purple strips and two blue strips. And block C has three blue strips and two purple strips, the opposite of block B. Now, those people who are making fabrics from their personal fabulous fabric stash, I've made up a couple of samples of what your blocks could look like, fashioned after the ABC block model that I've just shown. This would be a block A type with three solids and two fancies. Again, three solids and two fancies. A third with three solids and two fancies. This would be a block B or C with two solids. And I thought I would do uh, one block with coordinating uh, fabric, both prints or both fancy prints. So these are the kinds of squares that we can make for the community block. Uh, the, the community quilt. So no matter whether you've got a kit or you're using fabrics from your own fab, uh, fabulous fabric stash, everyone can participate and contribute to the community uh, quilt. So let's move on. So what are we going to do? 
we're going to, uh, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at what, how to sew the strips together. What is the first outcome here? You're going to sew your strips together. with a one quarter inch seam. And the stitching will look like this, where you see the gray stitching across the top. You'll sew along the long edge from end to end. That's what our outcome is for the hand sewers. Okay, how do we do that? That's the outcome. All right, we begin by laying our fabric strips in front of us. In order for block A, B, or C, I will be making block A. Next, we want to check to see if the fabric strips are facing up with the right or correct side facing up. So what is the right or the correct side? All right, I'm holding a sample of cloth in front of me. This is the correct side. The correct side is the side with the most vibrant, rich color. If it's print, it has the most clear and well-defined lines. This would be the wrong side of the cloth. It is faded and less well-defined. Now, I know that there are some exceptions for this, such as a dual-sided fabric, such as, uh, let's say, damask. It's a dual-sided fabric. Some sides may have a rich side on both sides. I'll let you make that uh, decision based on what your personal, I mean, your individual uh, circumstance is. But this is what I mean by right and wrong side. Thank you. All right, so I'm looking at these fabric strips. I'm looking for the more well-defined side and I've pre-selected these sides to be the right side. And now, that I've decided that these are the right sides, I'm now going to move on to the next step. I'm going to ready my needle for sewing. Let's take a look at needles. A sharps needle is probably the best needle for this task. Why? It is long, it is very uh, narrow, it is thin, it's slender, and the point is sharp. You don't have to select the needle that is called a sharp, but rather just select the needle that has these characteristics. Select the needle. and some thread. Now what color thread? Um, whenever I use two different color fabrics, I often use a gray color thread. Believe it or not, it just blends in. Or if you're using a one uh, fabric color, try to select the color that's close to the fabric that you're using. All right, now let's measure the thread. I'm going to hold the end of the thread in one hand at my shoulder. I'm going to hold my arm out to my side. That's the perfect length thread for your arm. Measure the thread. Hold the thread in your hand. Extend your arm out to your side. That's the perfect length thread for your arm. All right, now, to cut your thread, 
fold your thread over the blade of the scissors to get a good blunt cut. This makes it easier to get the thread through the eye of the needle. There it is. Goes through very easily. Now pull the thread that you just pulled through the eye of the needle about halfway down the length of the long thread. Halfway down the length of the long thread. Now, Hold the end of the thread because we are ready to tie our knot. I'm going to make a sewer's knot. If you know how to make a sewer's knot, go right ahead and make your sewer's knot. Now I'm going to talk to anyone who needs some guidance on this. Hold the needle in one hand, hold the end of the thread in the other. Lay the thread on your lay the thread on your index finger. Hold it there with your needle. Wrap the thread around the needle. Wrap the thread around the needle about five times. Now release the thread. Grab the tip of the needle to continue pressing the needle against your finger. And now put your thumb on the twist. And slide the needle between your fingers. And when you get to the end, there will be a knot. I'll do that one more time because sometimes I, I believe I was out of view. So I'll do that one more time. It doesn't matter if you, I'll cut this off. Hold the thread. Hold the needle, lay the thread on your index finger and hold it there with the needle. Take the thread and wrap it around the needle about five times. Let it go, grab the needle. Grab the needle and slide the needle and the thread between your fingers. And when you get to the end, you will have a knot. Okay. Now I'm going to put my needle down for just a second. We're going to move on to the next step. We're going to prepare our fabric. I'm going to pull two forward, strips one and two. I'm going to take these right sides and put them together. Flip strip two over onto strip one. Now 
and pin these two strips together along the right edge. Through both layers of cloth. And next, I want to mark exactly where I want to stitch. One quarter inch from the cut edge. That's where the seam needs to be. A seam is a, a line of stitching that holds two or more layers of cloth together. So I'm going to put this cut edge on this line and I'll place the ruler one quarter inch away from the edge. And now I'll take a look at some marking tools. All right, this is my favorite, but you may not have this, but you may have some other things that I have in this a marking toolbox. You may have a wax pencil. That's how that works. I hope you can see that. Or you may have a silver pencil for marking. Or dressmaker's pencil. Or tailor's chalk. You may even have some blackboard chalk. Either of these will work. You may even have a pencil. Yes, a pencil will work. If I write on this uh, violet or purple cloth, you can't see it, but I can. You will be able to see it at home. So if you don't have these other tools that I talked about, you can still use a pencil. So, uh, I'll talk about another method of marking using um, uh, just a regular ruler in just a minute. If you don't have this quilter's ruler, I'll just, I'll show you how to use this regular ruler in just a minute. Okay, I'm going to use this tool. And mark one quarter inch away from the cut edge. This will be my sewing line. I'm going to set this aside a minute because I promised you I would show you another way to do this task if you don't have a, um, a quilter's ruler. You do have a ruler like this, I'm sure, at home. Find the end of the ruler. Find the zero point on the ruler. Find the one inch on the ruler. Find half of the inch on the ruler. And half of the half of an inch is a quarter inch right here. So the space between zero and a quarter of an inch is where you want to mark. Put zero on the cut edge, on the cut edge of the cloth, put the quarter inch inward on the fabric. And that's what you're going to mark. I would mark it in about three places and then connect the lines. Using the side of the ruler.
there we are. So that's two ways to mark. I'm going to move this over. Because this will be strip three. I'll use that later. All right, now I am ready to sew. Pick up your threaded needle. So you're gonna see buttons that allow you to, you know, click start. Put it at the end, start at either end, and you're going to go in and out. In and out. Can you put this thing down? In and out, in and out along this line. And pull. Your stitches, you will find, your stitches will stay more straight if you make about four or five stitches at a time. Go in and out. In and out. In and out along the line. Try to make about four or five stitches at a time. Try to make short stitches before pulling. In and out. In and out, in and out. All right. Now, if you've ever sewn before, you know that there, sometimes the thread tangles, sometimes the thread breaks. And what do you do? You have to end your stitching. And I want to show you how to end your stitching now. It's okay to end your stitching now. I want to show you how to end it, but we're going to continue stitching. We're just going to, I'm going to show you how to make a knot, but we're going to keep on stitching. Making a knot periodically is good because if we, if one thread breaks along this entire length of stitching, all the stitching may come out. When I stitch, I always make junctures of knots along the way. So if a thread breaks, only a short distance will come out. So we're, I'm going to show you how to make a knot now. Close to where the thread is coming out of the cloth, I'm going to pick up a couple of threads off of the cloth. Pull the thread through, but not all of it. Leave a loop. Stitch through the loop three times. One. Two. Oops. Three. 
example. Let's do that one more time. Take a couple of threads from the cloth. Pull the thread, but not all the way. Leave a loop. Stitch through the loop. One, two, three. Pull all the way this time. That's a good solid knot. This is a knot that you use to end your stitching along. If you're finished, if your thread breaks, if your thread gets tangled, can't go any further, this is how you end your stitching. Or this is what you can do to take a break between your stitching along the way. On, the, on this piece I may make one, two, three, four knots. So if one section, the thread breaks, the whole, uh, section doesn't fall apart. Only one section comes apart. So I'm, I'm asking you to just keep sewing. Keep sewing. And when you get to this pin, make another knot. When you get to this section, make another knot. And when you get to the end, make a knot in a similar way. Now, Do the magic of this evening. I'm going to switch and fast forward to the end. I'm making my last few stitches. What's happening? Oh, there we are. Making my last couple of stitches. There we are. I'll show you one more time. Pick up a couple of threads. Leave a loop, stitch through the loop three times. One, two, three. See my thread is doubled, I don't want it doubled. Okay, there we are. And pull. And let's do it one more time. I'm going to do it one more time. Leave a loop, stitch through the loop. One, two, oh, left a little loop. Three, but I got it. There it is. Pull it tight. Now you can cut your thread, cut the thread close to the cloth. This is the outcome. Now you are probably not finished. You just go right ahead and sew at your own pace. And when you're finished, just keep watching what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, walk you through the rest of this, the construction of the, um, the block. Okay. going to walk you through the rest of the construction of the block. After you finished sewing strip A, I mean strip one to strip two, open up strip one and two sewn together and place it on the board. Beside strip three, 
And now you're going to take strip three, which is um, right sides together. Let's, this will be the wrong side now because uh, right sides together. Place it on top of so strip three, place it on top of strip two. Pin them together. Remember, I marked strip three earlier, so it's already marked. Pin it. It's already marked. And then you're going to hand sew it the same way that you're hand sewing now on the marked line, one quarter inch away from the cut edge. After you're finished sewing, strip three to strip two. You're going to open strip three. Take strip four, flip it over on strip three. Match the raw, the cut edges. Pin. Mark the one quarter inch line and then stitch. After stitching on strip four, Open strip four to the right side. And now you can put on strip five. Right sides together, flip it. Matching the cut edges. Pin. Mark and sew. And you will have your completed block. All right, let's summarize. You will make a block from uh, a kit that you got from the BMA, which contains components for block A, B, or C. Or if you did not get a kit from the BMA, you can make a kit, you can make a, a a block from your own fabulous stash. Like the ones that I showed earlier. Stitching, uh, when you stitch, you want your seams to be one quarter inch wide. Your stitching can be made by hand or by machine, which I will show you later in the program. And at this time, I will answer questions. So um, we can open up for questions. So. If Use their hand uh, waving or the hand si uh, symbol. Well, Tracy may be able to tell you that. Yeah, we're going to take questions from the chat. So I wanted to uh, just let you know, Rosalind, you have a lot of fans in the audience. Like people are <laughs> just, they're raving about your demonstration. Um, let's Thank see. You, Tracy. 
Rosalind, it says that you make uh, you make teaching an art form. Um, I get a strong feeling that we're going to witness a surge of new quilters in the coming years. But yeah, you've got a lot of fans, a lot of people that have really enjoyed this. Um, right, thank let's you. see. It, there's doing... been so many comments, which is good. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. There's been so many comments, and I think you were so thorough. There's not a whole lot of individual questions, but let me let me skim through here. Sorry, what were you going to say? I enjoy uh, quilting and I enjoy um, uh, having more people join the quilting world. It's plenty of room for all new friends. So <laughs> it's great to have more people move into this space. I love it. <laughs> Amy was asking if the fabric should be cotton or if there's a special or another type of quilting fabric they should be using. Uh, preferably cotton, 100% cotton is the best for quilts. Yes. Someone else asked about the colors. Does it matter as to which colors that they're using? Their favorite color is our favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> Good, question. Good answer. Uh, they're asking, uh, let's see, Bonita is asking if she should pre wash her fabric or not. That's a now that is a very good question. If she feels if it's a very robust color and her uh, best sense is that the fabric that she has may bleed, perhaps if it's a, a robust navy blue, maybe a batik that may run, maybe that would be a very good decision that uh, uh, her gut feeling is telling her that she should make. Um, so I, I would ask her to make the best decision that she thinks that ought to be made in that case. Yes. Let's see, uh, Dorothy Chestnut asked about the weight of the thread that you're using. I like 50 weight thread for piecing. It's a thinner thread versus um, a 30 weight. It's thick, it's used for the quilting. It may be used for quilting if you want to uh, uh, the thread to take on a more design effect. If, it, if you want a thick appearance of the uh, thread, but I, I used uh, 30, um, 50 weight for piecing. Uh, it may sometimes be called piecing thread. Um, if you use a heavier thread for piecing, if you will, uh, you're going to see it in the seam. And um, the thread that I use tonight is uh, a 50 weight thread. Now, in some of the kits, we had a 35, I believe 35 or a 30 weight thread. That'll be good to go as well, 30, right? 30, th I mean, I'm sorry, 30, 30, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. Wanda is asking about pressing the seams after sewing. I'm going to get to that. that. That will be in the second demonstration. Mm -hmm. The people that are asking if we're going to have a recording of this after the program, and we will, just hold tight, we'll email you about that. You'll be able to, to rewatch these demonstrations. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry, guys. No, a couple people were asking okay. if. Um, if we were going to show these demonstrations again, and yes, we will, we'll send everyone a link to the demonstration when we publish them on, on YouTube. We'll have just mm -hmm. Rosalind's demonstrations. Uh, let's see. All right, I have a couple I have a couple people asking about showing the knot again. We have a few okay. more minutes in the Q&A. You want to show that again? Sure, sure. All right. I'll go. Okay. Hold the needle pointing up to the ceiling and hold the end of the thread pointing up to the ceiling. Position your hands like that. 
Now lay your index finger, point your index finger out. Lay the thread on your index finger and hold it there with your needle. But hold on to the thread. Hold on to the thread. It's important that you hold on to the thread and do not reposition. Just continue to hold the thread in your the, in the hand that's holding the thread, this one. Continue to hold it after you, put, after you put it down on your index finger, continue to hold the thread. Then begin wrapping the thread around the needle. Now release the thread. Now grab the tip of the needle so that you can press the needle against your finger and take your thumb and hold the twist. Now kind of relax the fingers that are holding the twist and put pressure on the fingers that are holding the needle because you're going to need that pressure to grab the needle and pull the needle and the thread between your index finger and the thumb that are holding the twist. And when you get to the end of the thread, you're going to have a knot. Uh, let's see, another question, someone asked about, let's see, African prints. She was saying that uh, she has some African printed material and it has a waxy feel to it. She was wondering if she should remove that. No, just go ahead. I've used African wax prints. Um, African wax prints, excuse me, um, do have a seal on, sometimes they have a seal um, label on the fabric. If it has a seal label on the fabric, she she uh, wouldn't want to remove that seal label. But as far as African wax prints, just go right ahead and use them. She doesn't have to pre-wash them. Uh, I've used African wax prints before. Um, just go right ahead and use them as she would any other fabric. Do you have any recommendations on where people can buy fabric? I see a few questions about where, where they can get fabric. Um, well, of course there's Joann's and then there are uh, quilt shops. I like, I prefer quilt shops. However, quilt shops are a little bit more pricey, but the quality of the materials that are sold in quilt shops are of a higher quality. That is my preference. And then there are specialty shops uh, of various types that, serve, that sell uh, different kinds of fabrics, uh, ethnic fabrics uh, of all types. And of course, there's always online and you can find almost anything online. Uh, just type in the kind of fabric that you want and you will find uh, endless sites available. If there's a particular style you want, uh, Asian, African, uh, uh, let's see, um, for feed sack, um, you name it. Uh, if there's a particular style, you can find it. A particular artist uh, um, that you like, you can find it online. I see a couple of comments here. I think a few people may have gotten strips in their kits that may be a tad bit smaller than the 15 inches. What would you recommend? Would you recommend that they go on and, and sew forward? Yes. If it's a little shorter? Yes. 
Definitely. Mm -hmm. We may have to uh, trim them uh, down a little bit anyway. So go ahead. We'll take the shortest and adjust everything else accordingly. Yes. So our last question is uh, the type of thread. I hope I didn't ask you that already. With the type of thread, polyester or cotton? Cotton, please. Mm -hmm. 